Hey team, Mike here, Dr. 40 Fitness and Dr40Fitness.ca. Uh, this topic of protein, I'm going to do with it again today. Uh, I just see in, every day in the forums people talking about too much protein. Uh, I can show you a dozen. I can show you a dozen images in the last couple of days. Every time I seem to jump in, someone's saying, what happens if I go over my protein for the day? Oh my, oh my God, my protein is 90 grams for the day. What if I hit 100? Or this one just drives me nuts. Hey, I'm at uh, my protein for the day, but I still have to get my fat up. How do I get fats without adding protein? Oh my God. Uh, like the misinformation is just driving me nuts. So uh, luckily I came across a really good study and I want to share it with you today on, is there such a thing as too much protein? Is that, is that possible? Can your protein get too high? If this is your first time on my channel or you haven't yet, hey, please do subscribe. All right, like the video, smash the like button for me, subscribe to the video, share the video if you uh, know of situations where this kind of uh, content is relevant. And if you're like me and you live in the low carb keto, the Atkins and or the intermittent fasting space, this is a, a channel I promise you, you're gonna wanna subscribe. I, I do my best to share some, uh, some really good logical but scientific reasoning when it comes to low carb and, and, and keto and of course intermittent fasting. And that's all my, my videos are, are kind of that genre, right, of keto and low carb, but always scientific, always showing you studies and trying to get, get you and I some really good takeaways from them. And this one is no different. So let's get after it with this study. This study you'll see is in the Journal of International Society of Sports Nutrition. The title you'll see is The Effects of Consuming a High Protein Diet on Body Comp in Resistance Trained Individuals. So let's make a couple of caveats right from this. First, high protein. Um, it's easy to use that term, but you know what I almost never see in social media is anyone quantify what high protein means, right? So uh, I, I have some carnivore buddies, some zero carb buddies who are eating in excess of 250 to th in that range of 250 to 300 grams a day of protein. I can't even figure out how to eat that much. I aim for 175. I weigh 190. I try to get to the one gram per pound and it's damn tough. In fact, I can't do it without adding a couple of whey smoothies and I eat a lot of meat but I need a couple of whey smoothies a day to get to the 200 mark. And my buddies are in the 250 to 300, I don't even know how they do it. Anyway, um, this study, as you can see, is 4.4 grams per kilo, right? So again, using me as an example of 85, roughly 85 kilos, that's more than 320 grams a day. And we're gonna see the result of this study and you can apply the math yourself. By the way, for you Americans, if you're not used to that kilogram uh, measurement that the rest of the world uses, unlike you guys who still use Imperial, uh, it's exactly half. It's not exactly half, but let's just call it half. So 4.4 grams per kilo is the same as you saying two grams per pound. All right. So again, when I say I weigh 85 kilos, I'm actually 185 pounds. So you can see the correlation between the two. It's almost double. So if you're going from kilogram to pound, it's just about half. It's close enough that we aren't, we aren't going to argue. We're just going to go with half. All right, and notice also in resistance trained individuals. So I'm assuming every one of you is do doing some kind of exercise. All right, if not, I'll put a link down below on why you need to. Uh, in fact, just to digress really quickly, my methodology and everyone in my boot camp, our methodology is we eat at maintenance and then we create our caloric deficit via exercise. So I don't know about you, but I work out every day. Uh, I probably take off two days a month. But every day I do something and I like to alternate between resistance training, aka weights, with HIT. So for example, today for me was a HIT morning. My boot camp was, was here. We did a really good 45 minute, I mean, pff, like left nothing behind, gasping, sweating, just drenched. Um, and so 45 minutes probably burned about 400 calories. So that's what this study is about. It's the effects of high protein diet up to 4.4 grams per kilo or two grams per pound on body composition in those who train. Let's have a look at the study itself. The abstract, notice it has been posited that intakes of 1.4 to two grams per, ki per kilo, all right, so 0.7 to one gram per pound are needed for physically active individuals. There are people who actually say less than that. There are, I just saw the other day someone said, you know, so we only need 0.5 or 0.6 per pound. So roughly one to 1 1.2 grams per kilo. I don't even know if that's enough for sedentary people, right, to stay in a positive nitrogen balance, but definitely not for anybody who's physically active. So the purpose of this study was to determine the effects of a high protein diet of 4.4. <laughs> Goodness, they didn't have to go that high. I mean, I would have been happy at 2.5. 2.5 to me, grams per kilo or 1.25, 1.5-ish grams per pound to me would have been enough, but they want to see in men and women the effects of 4.4. Again, using me as an example, 320 grams of protein a day. 
And if you're a 60 kilo woman or 120, let's call it 130, it actually works out to about 130 pound woman, 260 grams for you. Unbelievable. 30 healthy resistance trained individuals participate in the study. The mean age was 24. Subjects were randomly assigned to one of the following groups, either a control group, steady amount of protein as you'll see, or a high protein group. Well, let's see what, they, what that made up. The high protein group consumed significantly more protein and calories than the control group. The high protein group consumed on average 307 grams of protein. I got you guys a protein shake. Awesome. I love protein. I know you love protein. I love protein too. Now, by the way, notice the plus or minus 70, 69. Okay, so that, that means is based on weight. Remember, this is 4.4 grams per kilo. So the, the smallest people, let's call it the women, I assume, uh, 70 grams, up to 70 grams less. So only at about 240 only. Did I just say only about 200? I bet there's not one woman watching this video right now who eats 240 grams of protein. That's how high the protein was for the smallest woman in this study. Conversely, obviously the biggest person, it could have been a woman or a man, I'm not saying I don't know. I didn't actually look close enough at the individuals in the study. I looked at them as a group. Uh, was at 376 grams. <gasps> Goodness. Unbelievable. Almost 400 grams of protein compared to 138 plus or minus 42. So again, the same thing applies. Somewhere between 96 grams on the low end for the smallest person up to as high as 180 grams, right? I don't know. Some of you are probably thinking that's the, that's the control group. I don't need 150 to 180 grams right now. And yet 138 was the average grams of protein in the control group. So I want to say this carefully with a little bit of savvy, but I bet you some of you right now are thinking 138 is high protein. It's not. In fact, it's normal according to every position paper as long as you're doing some exercise. Probably works out to about 100 grams if you're sedentary, but I know none of you are because you're all health conscious like I am. You do some form of training, some form of exercise, which means normal should be, well, you can do the math, about 138. Okay, when expressed as unit of body weight or against as a per unit per body weight, the HP group consumed 4.4 plus or minus 0.8. So it's, right, so you can do the math again, 3.6 up to 5.2 grams per kilo versus 1.8 plus or minus 0.4 in the control group. Wow. Now, I just want to show you the results. I'm going to jump right to the results here. This is actually really cool. This is the pre, as you can see in the control group, the first three columns, pre, post, and the percentage of change. And in the high protein group, pre, post, and percentage of change. Let's go right to the high protein group. Notice the pre versus the post and the change. So top one is body weight. They put on some body weight. Now you're looking at that going, hmm, they put on 1.7 kilos, call it 3.5 pounds. So in this three month trial, they put on about 3.5 pounds. Now, without knowing any more, what do you think it is? Do you think it's muscle? Do you think it's fat? Let's find out. The fat free mass, line two is fat free mass, FFM, fat free being muscle, put on 1.9, let's call it two. I'm sorry, this isn't pounds, this is kilos. Two kilos of muscle. Now they're working out and they're on high protein. You would hope they're gonna put on muscle. God bless, they did. They put on two kilos, so roughly four pounds for you Americans. Notice fat mass. Fat mass they lost, 0.2. By the way, look over at the change in the control group. The control group didn't, they actually put on 0.3. So high protein being thermic, having a great thermic effect, assisting with, listen, people so often in social media say, if you overdo fat, or overdo protein, it'll turn to fat. Or if you do protein, it'll stall your weight loss. Look at this higher protein, they lost weight. Now that they put on more muscle, instead of putting on 1.3 for the control group, they put on 1.9, but they also lost 0.2 versus the control group putting on 0.3 as a group. Unbelievable. And so the difference again in body fat percentage is minus 0.6%. So phenomenal amount of difference. And so you got to sit back. If you're like me, you sat back, if you looked at the study and went, oh my God, 300 grams of protein, 240 for the smallest person, 370 for the highest person, and they they put on muscle and they lost fat. So you guys talk about protein? I love protein. I love protein too. We know you love protein. Protein rocks. Awesome. The next time, honestly, the next time, I'm gonna share this video across the board. Every time anybody ever says you go over your protein, you put on fat, or you go, you put on, you eat too much protein, you, you stall your weight loss. Bull, bull. Not according to science, not according to studies, all right? Oh my God, the dogma. 40 subjects were initially recruited for the investigation. And I want you to notice this, by the way, before I go any further, 
Don't read this yet. Oh yeah, you can't help it. It's in front of you and I won't take it down. 40 subjects were initially recruited for the investigation. 40 individuals did this. Only 30 finished. 10 dropped out. Of the 10, three stated an inability to consume the protein needed for the study. And one talked about, well, that's the same. Gastrointestinal distress is the same as not being able to consume that much protein. Six didn't provide a reason. So 30 finished. So notice that. When people talk about you know, too much protein, it turns out that this wasn't enough. By the way, this wasn't enough to qualify as too much protein. Did you get that? Nothing about this study showed that there were any physiological impacts that qualified as too much protein. And yet, 10 of them dropped out, of which four expressly stated they couldn't eat enough protein. They couldn't eat it enough. So when people say to me, um, you know, how much, Mike, how much protein is too much? Uh, I always respond with, this is my catchphrase. If you ever see anybody use this catchphrase, they learned it from me, I promise you. My team, my boot camp crew, they use it every day. You, it, too much protein is more than you can reasonably eat in a day. Let that sink in. Too much protein is more than you can reasonably eat in a day. Because this at 4.4 was not enough, it wasn't too much, clearly the effects were great. They put on muscle and they lost fat. So we didn't even get there and yet, 10 dropped out, four of which expressly said they couldn't tolerate that much protein. Too much protein is more than you can reasonably eat in a day. Isn't that good to know? Oh my goodness, that's profound. It should be noted that every subject in the high protein group consumed protein powder in order to meet the requirements for the study. Otherwise, it would have been virtually impossible or at least highly unlikely that anyone could consume 4.4 via food alone. So again, this wasn't too much protein. They had excellent physiological responses to 300 grams of protein. And despite that, they couldn't do it via food alone. So again, how much, how much protein is too much protein? More than you can reasonably eat in a day. You can't even cheat and use whey powder for a couple of smoothies a day and eat too much. You can't. They couldn't do it. It's impossible or at least highly unlikely that you could get enough protein into you because 4.4 wasn't enough. Oh, I don't know, is it sinking in yet? The key finding in the present study is that consuming a hypercaloric, by the way, they, these, these people, I want you to get that one more time. They were hypercaloric. They were in a gain situation, but because so much of their calories was protein, they still lost body fat as an average, as a group. They lost body fat and put on muscle and they were not in a deficit. They weren't even at maintenance. They were hypercaloric. Ah, the key finding in the present study is that consuming a hypercaloric, high protein diet has no effect on body comp in resistance trained individuals. This is the first investi investigation in resistance trained individuals to demonstrate that consuming a high protein, hypercaloric diet does not result in a gain in fat mass. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. And oh, by the way, did you notice that? Five times more than the recommended daily allowance. If you think for a second, the RDA on protein, which is, as I said, is somewhere between 0.6 and 0.8 grams per pound, or roughly one to 1.2 grams per kilo is sufficient, give your head a shake. Five times, more than five times the RDA. They lost fat, put on muscle. Is it sinking in? Huh? Somebody get this man some protein! So, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got something out of that. I hope you're going to not be one of those people now who talks about too much protein. If anything, please share this video. You ever see somebody say, I'm afraid of too much protein or I don't want to eat too much protein or too much protein kicks me out of ketosis or too much protein will turn into fat. Nonsense. None of the above. It doesn't work that way. The body does not work that way. I have a video down below where I personally did a 60 gram study with whey. Okay, I'm linked to that. You need to do this yourself. If you have any curiosity about the impact of whey, I'm going to put a link down below where I ingested 60 grams away. Boom, boom, boom. Took that down and then tested blood for ketones and glucose for the next 90 minutes. Did not leave ketosis. 60 grams of whey didn't leave ketosis. All right, I'll put that link down below. On that note, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're going to be one of those people now who's perspectives as, as broadened when it comes to protein and what constitutes too much. Not possible, right? What's my, what's my catchphrase? Too much protein is more than you and I can reasonably eat in a day. I hope I see that in the forums more. I hope that gets shared around, that when someone says I'm eating too much protein, nope, you're not. It's more than you can reasonably eat in a day. And these men and women, 40 men and women proved it, that 240 for the smallest woman was insufficient to qualify as too much. If you're below 240, you obviously can't use that caveat. You can't say that anymore. You can't use that excuse. Please don't. 
All right, so comments, questions, of course, put in the comment section down below the best comments I turn into videos like this one. Please do give me your feedback if you agree, disagree. If there's something I missed, I'll put the link to this study so you can go look at it yourself. And on that note, thank you for your time. Don't forget to hit that like button, like the video, subscribe to the video, share the video, and I'll see you in the next one.